Hey everyone, I want to be doing Tuesday's tips now. This is for this gesso painting which I did. Now, I'm going to just finish it off first. I just use some straight water to thin some black gesso down just on the paper palette. And then I'm actually going to mix some brown in with that as well. Sorry. So it's brown and black, mainly brown with a little bit of the black. Just a good dark brown basically. And I want it to be thin like ink. I'm adding water. These are acrylics. And I just want it to be thin like ink so it's really, really runny. And then with that, I can just come up in here and here and there and put some like branches and stuff in. Paint some more detail in there. You can see all these uh, leaves and stuff that we've got in there, they all really need a lovely branch to them. You know, like that? I like to do these fast because you can put more in and they seem a lot better. You don't need to be tireless over doing this. I just do them as fast as I possibly can, but trying new shapes that I've seen while I've been out in nature. So much of this you see is about observation while you're out there. Because you're basically portraying the things that you've seen in reality in nature. So I'm just going to maybe have a branch out there. And you can work, you can spend hours just doing it, just doing the branches. I'm going to try and do them as fast as possible for you guys. Still want them to look good. I want some gnarliness to them. I don't want them all to be just flat. See, we're going to go over this with oil, so I'm not too worried. It's pretty easy to put them back in the background. I want this area to be in the background, and then these trees are going to be further forward in the foreground, so I'm working in that way. A few coming up to this. Maybe there's four or five little branches holding that bush up. You'll have to keep applying water to the paint because it will keep drying on you as you go. It's not a problem. See like there? Just bring that through. Cool. I'm going to go over these in oils eventually anyway you see so what I'm doing now is just a precursor to the actual oil painting that I'm going to do. You could just leave it like this, it looks great, you know, it's a really nice thing to do. I just wanted to show you how to use transparent colours over the top of gessos. It's a really nice exercise to, to do. Okay. And some dark branches needed in there. So sometimes I start at the top like this so and I'll work my way down applying more pressure as I come down other times I'll start down here and I'll just pull up and that's for the fine little fine branches now if I was really wanting to do a an ancient woodland say and it has just really gnarly branches everywhere I'd be more inclined to use a smaller brush for that but for this it's not a problem because just like there I'm just putting indications in shadow on that side of it again remembering to keep mixing the water with the brown and the black paint you need both, you need every component if you've not got enough water it'll be too dry if you've got too much water it'll be too runny if you haven't got enough pigment you won't have a good colour hue so all them things are there to be thought about. There. Just put a couple going on in there. Yeah, loads and loads of these branches coming out when you're in woodland. And you see them for real. Really gets me, I love it. It allows you as well to have some real nice contrast between the light of the sky. 
See that? Right, maybe. That's a big branch that I'm going to have up there. Just follow that through and just disappear off. In the water, I need to just have an indication of some stuff going on in there as well. It's only a, you don't have to be exact. When you're doing reflections in the water, the reflections actually do move. So they don't have to be identical. You just want something like want it to be something like in fact there's not that many going to be seen in here because there's only that one really there but then that's not really going to get seen hardly so many more for any. see i'm going to go over all this with oils like i say i'm going to let this dry and i'm going to go over it with oils so a lot of this won't even be seen so right so clean that off never leave your brush with just someone drying five minutes and your brush is ruined i've had this brush for a long time and if you clean and stray away every time it'll last you for a, a long time otherwise you'll be buying your brushes every other week <laughs> trust me on that one right so what i'm wanting to do is create a tiny little bit more dark i'm just going to use a fan brush a fan brush, a tiny bit of the brown, and I'm just going to get some sap green. There, are you? there. Cool. Just a really dark green that I'm mixing up. So there's sap green, a little bit of brown, and black. Something about to that consistency. Load both sides of the brush and then just up in here in the centres you can just touch a bit of that just in there so there's a little hint of green going on you always seem to settle down into the gesso a bit anyway these when you do them you don't want them really bright at the moment we can highlight them brighter later just want a little indication of some dark green going on in there there. Just using the corner of the fan brush. So all you need to use is just that corner. I know to you guys you might not even notice this. You might not even get a tell the green. But it's there. No shortcuts really, you know, you, with this acrylics and that. I just love to do this though and let it dry. Sometimes you can use the green, if you use it in a, an area where it's light, you'll see it as green. See that just in there? I'll do that now and again as well, so there's a few brighter spots. Just here and there with that, same up in there maybe, where that white is, I can bring this as though it's coming through. And so, you're catching a bit more of that sunlight. This is where my sun's going to be around this area. So again, I can just come out of that a little bit, just using the corner. And because of the white underneath, see how much lighter it looks instantly. And that's just in the bright area, really, where I'm doing that. There's a little bit in there. And sometimes just push up, do a little upward movement, see that, just there. And it's just going to give it that green hue that you want. So remember, this is all acrylics just for now, this time. I'm going to put a little bit of green in there. And then we'll use that. Uh, it's very dark though, what I'm doing at the moment. I'm not trying to make all the light highlights, not yet. That's the icing on the cake. That's the part that you leave for later. But as you see, using it in the light areas, you get them lovely light background trees. Even these bushes down here, you can really just go in there 
where it's white, but I'm using this very thin way. I'm not using a lot of colouring of it, see that? And then it makes it look like these are going to be done in oils, brought forward anyway, you see, so these will just look like they're in the background type, type of thing. Just sat there in the background, chilling out. I want that to be dark at the base anyway, because there would be a shadow from the light coming above. I want to get a bit of that green as well. And I'm just going to come over this grey one, you know the, the one that I did grey? And again I'm just using the sap green on its own this time, not with the dark. This is right in the bright spot, so I want the top of that to maybe have a bit of a glow as well. Just slide that there. What I want to do is use some dark now, like I did over there. Make a dark, dark colour with the sap green, and I just want to put a few darks in at the base of that, the shadows, in the shadowed areas. Just in there. Cool. I've always enjoyed doing these gesso paintings. It's amazing what you can achieve. And I just want to repeat that same process again in the water, coming just a bit below. Just a little bit below that so that it's going to stand out. So you put it in the darkest spot first and then it'll, you'll have a small amount of colour on your brush then. And you can make it something similar to what's above. Maybe you have to do a bit more colour just in there. Make it suit and match that. Get the dark. Get some dark again, back in the shadows. You make sure you mix the dark with the sap green though. You don't want just straight black, you just want a dark green over top of that. There. Cool. That just gives you a bit of some depth as well. You can see the, the light's going to come over this, so I wanted that green glow just going on in there. Again, I can just use the same thing and just put a bit of that up in here. Where these bushes are here, it's quite dark. So I'll use a dark colour. And then I want to thin it out with the sap green. And just use a really nice sap green down in there. It's going to come all the way up more or less. To about there, I think. Just see a little bit of sky going through these trees. We will. And then right over all the tree trunks that you did, will still remain there. You'll still be able to see where they are. But it's not a worry. It's not a worry in the slightest. Something about like that. And then this tree here, and then which we've done. Now, with this, I just put the sap green in the middle where it's dark. I just want to do that same thing and catch a bit of the light by going into the white area. You can put a little glow underneath it as well. So much fun to do with these. There it is. Same thing again. A little glow just on the top and underneath a little bit. Just estimate it, it's gonna have to be perfect. It's right in there. Yeah. Everywhere where the sun is, I wanna make good use of that little oil. Although I'm gonna be covering this over with oil paint, so hopefully this will still just show through. In these lovely areas here, it will definitely still show through. In these light spots, using this acrylic in this way. But it'll leave bits of white as well, you see. So that's, that's even better, because that's what we want, you see. This area here is all just trees. So I might leave a little bit there for sky. A bit there, and then up in here, all green. But you see how I'm just scrubbing it? means that it's going on transparently and that's even with the acrylics even with the acrylics you can make it go on there transparently it's not just the oils which is what I'm going to show you later but also them as well and where I've 
put that white in there, put a bit of greens in there, and I'm going to keep changing by putting a bit of brown in there as well. So just up in here, if I'm gentle, no, it didn't stand out. Try that. Just up in here, a bit of that brown hue, and it'll make like a yellow ochre type colour. See that? Don't want them all just the same. I'm going to keep varying that colour tone. Now that's behind that. So a good way of getting depth, you see. And all I'm doing is using it very transparently. Not a lot of colour. Very small amounts of colour. And I want a bit behind there. Coming down to about there. Behind this bush. And I'm just scrubbing. The good thing is by scrubbing like this, it still leaves some of the white of the canvas showing and that's the little glimmers of light which you get from the sunlight and it's shining through. Right, so again that same brown colour with a little bit of sap green and then I'm going to do the very same thing just up in here, I'm going to just change the hue slightly by using this brown. I need a bit more of the brown to do that. There. It only has to change it a little bit and it makes a good difference when you do that. If it's all just one flat grain it will look good. It just look flat. <laughs> And we want depth in our picture and we want variety of colour tones and everything. If you look in nature, it inspires me all the time to mix it up because it's amazing. The top of them are even talking about it. It's, uh, we're looking at these trees and they're saying, you look around you and the variety in the shades of greens is unbelievable. So don't ever feel fixed to just one because it's boring then. Make it like it is in reality. All different kinds of browns, greens, really bright greens, dark greens. See I'm going over them trunks, not even worried. Because it's so easy to just come back and sort that out, it's not a problem. I do actually need to get some of that same brown in the water now. So Again, I'm just going to thin it down slightly this time by using water with it, you know, with the brown and the green together. Just a little bit of green, not a lot, mainly brown, just like this colour that we've got up in here. That's what I'm after. I want it to be dark at the base, that one, but it'll leave a nice light bit there still. That's it. These trees will be painted back in front again, like I say. You don't worry about them. I want to put a bit of that brown just down in there. I've done a lot of commissions before with uh, acrylics. It's a really lovely medium to use if you use it in the correct way. I'm using this transparently, but there's loads of different ways to do it, to use it. Somebody taught me it. There's a guy called Crawshaw, and I'm not sure if any of you guys have heard of him. They might do, but he's an older, older guy who used to do an art, <coughs> an art, uh, like series. It was a series of different art classes that he did, and he used to paint in real life. And I'm hoping before the end of this year that I'm going to get a chance to actually paint outdoors for you all as well. So that'd be cool. Just make that a bit darker. Just in there and that area. Cool. Again, it's just matching what's up there. There's a bit of that green and yellow. A greeny brown. Just there. So just see it again. I just want to... I'm using it very, you don't need a lot of paint for this, and you scrub it in there. It'll start to dry on you, so you need to keep cleaning your brushes well in the water. Yeah. Now, back to my sap grain. 
bit of water to thin it so that it's transparent. And then same again, put a bit of that green to reflect from what's above there. It's like doing a, a wash in watercolours if you like, only you're having to scrub it in there instead of nice soft strokes that you use watercolours. I do love to use watercolours though, they're a really nice medium to work with. Totally different to oils, you get to work with back to front if you like when you do using uh, watercolours. You get to we keep the darks always and retain the darks. If you kill the darks with watercolours, you can't get them back again. You can't get your lights back again. Unless you use gouache or something like that, but I don't think it ends up looking good at all then. Just like a mismatch of all sorts of different stuff. A little bit of that, just up in there, that brown. Cool. And all the little impressions that were there before, which were made basically by the... By the, uh, what's it called? The sponge. They remain in there. And you can even go back in little bits of brown or little bits of green. And you can just go straight back in and then and put a bit of colour in there. Just in these little bits. You don't necessarily need it, you know, there's plenty going on in there now. So I think what I'll do is I'll let this dry.